at you with another video today. I am doing my rebuild of the Atlanta Falcons. This will be in a fantasy style. I'm also live on Twitch, as you can see. Uh, Bamilo RBT waits until I start what we're doing, and then he, he goes ahead and he subscribes so he gets in the video. Um, thank you, Bamilo. Anyway, and that wasn't even Bamilo who did it. It was gifted by Jay Wizzle, so I appreciate that. Anyway, that's the intro to the video now. Uh, I am on Twitch. Link to that is in the description, as is my second channel, as you maybe skipped my intro. Use code Bangle on FanDuel. You're getting it, the ad twice if you skipped it. Uh, or I guess you wouldn't be getting it twice. Whatever. Here we go. Falcons rebuild. A team that's really underperformed this year. A lot of that has been due to injuries. You've seen some players maybe take a step back. Desmond Trufant hasn't played as well as he has in years past. And Demonte Casey has stepped up at free safety, currently leads the NFL in interceptions. So we're going to be taking this team that has underperformed and getting younger, doing whatever we can to make this team a contender. Of course, as I said, I am on Twitch, so this will be a longer video. What else would I say? Um, yeah, a couple of things. So yeah, sorry that this is two hours if you don't like that or whatever it is. And then second, I always get people that complain when the videos are super long and there are ads throughout, they're like, eh, an ad every, so many ads. It's like, okay. So there are 10 minute videos that go out, right? They get three mid rolls in them. That is an ad like every three minutes, basically. Yet I come out and I upload two hours worth of content, if you're going to call it that, right? And I do an ad every like 10 minutes and people are like, wow, so many ads. It's like, would you would you rather watch an ad every three minutes or every 10? I mean, it's not rocket Scientology, you know? Shout out to Tom Cruise. I've used that joke so many times. Um, trade influence package. I guess, um, I don't know. I've never, I, have I shown the coach name on screen before ever? I don't think so, but we're going to do it. Let's try, let's try a classic. Hell yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um, all right. Let's do end of the season, weekly training auto, scout auto, tutorial pop-ups, off, private yes. Now that I'm on stream, I'm going to make it one so now we can join. And we are golden. Hold on. Wait. Is everything good? Yeah. Let's start this thing. Starting from the regular season, let's go over the lineup, make some trades as we like to do. So, Jesus, who is that at left guard? That's a player I actually have no familiarity with. Wes Schweitzer. His picture is ghastly. Very scary. Anyway, Jake Matthews at left tackle. Andy Levitre, Alex Mack, Brandon Fusco, or Fusco, or Fusco, Ryan Schrader, I guess is down to a 75 overall now. That's not great. Probably going to have to look to replace him. Austin Hooper at tight end, Mohamed Sanu, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Justin Hardy at wide receiver. We've got Devontae Freeman back and healthy. He'll be playing. And Tevin Coleman's a player I'm absolutely going to be looking to trade. He's in the final year of his contract. Absolutely want that out of there. And Matt Schaub back in the Falcons. That's interesting. Uh, he used to be a beast for them, and uh, it's notable. Matt Ryan is an 89 overall. He's 33. I don't, I don't know what we're gonna be able to do with him. We'll have to, we'll have to figure it out. On the defensive side of the ball, got Ricardo Allen, Demonte Casey. One of these guys is gonna get traded. Probably gonna be Ricardo Allen. He's a little bit higher of an overall. I think I just might want to rock with Casey. He only has normal development. I don't know. That'll be another game time decision. Keanu O'Neill at strong safety, of course. Devondre Campbell, Duke Riley, Deion Jones, Bruce Carter. Uh, ooh. Is it like, it's like Fuyasadi Olakun? Something like that? Yeah, I, I think I got a, 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 as good of, <laughs> a, as good of a, a read on that as I was going to. Bruce Irvin also in here. Tack McKinley. Bruce Irvin, we just mentioned Derek Shelby, Grady Jarrett, uh, I want to say Terrell McLean. 
Yeah, he is 30. Probably going to move on from him. Diedrich Sonat, Jack Crawford, Brooks Reed, Vic Beasley's down to his 79. And then a cornerback, Desmond Trufant, Robert Alford, Brian Poole, Justin Bethel, great special teamer, and Isaiah Oliver. Let's go ahead and uh, try to trade some of these guys. I should place Joe Buck on Thursday Night Football. What a dream that would be. Also, it's sad that my, my pal RBT would not support me on his own accord. I will tell you that. Very sad. All right, we want to get younger. I'm cool with Alex Mack, even though he's 32. Matt Ryan, I think we're probably cool with. I mean, it's not that old of a team in general. A lot of these guys are super young, and I don't need to trade any of them, really. Vic Beasley would be nice to trade because uh, he's not that good, it appears. I do want to go in to roster and check out some of these contract situations if I can. Where do we see it? It would be in, it'd be in like salaries or something. So I want to see who is in the final year of their deal. Who do we need to hold on to? Who do we need to get rid of? So out of the higher overall players, Bruce Irvin, if we can. Zane Beadle is going to have no value. Brian Poole. Andy Levitre, maybe. Tevin Coleman, obviously we talked about. Grady Jarrett is an absolute re-sign, so no way. And then, yeah, not a lot. We're in a pretty good situation contract-wise. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Tyrod Taylor on the trade block. All right, let's add these players. Tevin Coleman's going to have probably yellow value with a lot of different teams. And I said what? Brooks Reed and... Who was the other one? Bruce Irvin, maybe? Andy Levitre? Let's see. I'd love double green value from Brooks Reed and Bruce Irvin. Ooh, we might be able to do something with the Raiders here. They don't have their picks because it's not... I didn't... Ah, uh, that's annoying. Who would I even want from the Raiders if I went after a player? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. From the Panthers, we go a number of different ways. Luke Keekley would be a great addition to the team. I might try that. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Anyone on this team that's valuable? We could bring in Daryl Williams. Dontari Poe, we could bring him back. I don't really want to do that. Daryl Williams might be the play. RBT gifted a sub to McFook. Appreciate the gift sub, dude. He obviously just wants to be in the video, clearly. As this will get, oh, at least 20,000 views. That's probably exactly what it's going to get. Uh, that would be neat. Uh, let's add... Do I want to add Tevin Coleman to this? I know we have a free safety to trade. But I don't want to do that necessarily. Oh, Brian Poole is someone that we could add. He's in the final year of his deal. He's probably not someone I'm going to re-sign. And they don't want to do that. I want Daryl Williams, though. That's my... That's the thing. He, he's a free agent, too, impending, so... Like, we could... I don't know. Do we want to make this trade? I think I'm going to keep looking. See if there's any other team that wants these two. It's not. It's just going to be the Raiders and the Panthers. So it's one of these teams. The Raiders are going to be pretty bad, though. I might try to see if we can get a first-round pick or something from the Raiders. They should be bad, but, I mean, you never know. Simulation is so weird sometimes. They might perform like the best team in the league. Let's try to get there first. This is going to be a lot easier to acquire. Just player for player trades are often difficult. And that's going to be accepted outright. Brooks Reed, Bruce Irvin to the Oakland Raiders. And we get their first round pick. That doesn't really hurt us because we don't lose a starter at all. I know Brooks Reed technically was starting, but Vic Beasley's more than comfortable as a replacement. Jesus Christ. RBC has gifted out 
10 tier one community sub gifts. Oh my goodness. Welcome, Mike. I love, I'm not going to say that. I love uh, Oriole, Armadillo, Jets fan, Logan, Chud, McLovin, Optimus Prime, and Bomb. Welcome, guys. Appreciate RBT. Thanks, buddy. I guess that uh, that coin sponsor money was worth it, right? <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, what else do we want to do? Wide receiver. I could trade Muhammad Sanu. I'm gonna keep hearing this noise. It's muted, but thank God, here in my ears. Let's see. Who's gonna want Muhammad Sanu? The Ravens, of course. Is RBT giving out ten more? Oh my goodness. This is for a video. This has got to be R RBT gifts 100 subs to Bengal. <laughs> Welcome, Bobby Wasabi, Return Camper, Brazier, Pizza, Boosty, Speeder Boy, Tony, Gaming, Brandon, and Ryden. Thank you so much, RBT. You're going to bring a tear to my eye. Michael Pierce. Are we in a 4 3 right now? 4 3 personnel. We're going to need another defensive tackle. Michael Pierce could be the look. He might even be acquirable as well. I don't want to trade Devondre Campbell. I don't want to trade Tack McKinley. Derek Shelby? No interest. Why would there be? A quarterback and a tight end there is a need. But a quarterback, they're not going to want anybody. Michael Pierce is not going to be a player we can get, I don't think. I'm going to add Brian Poole because I know I want to trade him. And I'm going to add also Andy Levitre. So if there's triple green, that'd be amazing. It looks like we're going to get double and then yellow, which still is good. Seahawks are a team. Getting Bobby Wagner would be cool. I don't, I don't love anyone on the Seahawks here for the squad. What about from the Vikings? We don't ever get Harrison Smith. I know he's 29, but I would do that deal all day. That's not going to get done. Adam Thielen would be a cool player to get. Oh, we don't have the cap room for that. It's close. Everson Griffin would also be a cool player. I would take Everson Griffin in a heartbeat. I know he's 30, but he's also a 90 overall. That's not going to happen. It looks like Harrison Smith... Is going to be the easiest guy to trade for here. What if we took out Andy Levitre? And I know you have safeties. Why would you ever do this? Well, Harrison Smith is a game-breaking player. It's not going to be able to happen. That's unfortunate. Mm, yeah. Is there anyone else on this Vikings team? Daniil Hunter. Absolutely not going to happen. Hate to see it. Kyle, or Shil Sh uh, not Kyle Rudolph. Sheldon Richardson would be someone I want to get. Ooh, this might be the move. Andy Levitre is not going to make it go through, I don't think, but I would love this to go through. Damn, I don't think I'm going to be able to get Sheldon Richardson anyway, or either. Like, these trades are tough. Like, I don't really want anyone here. Bengals. We could get Geno Atkins, maybe? Oh, we can. We can get Geno Atkins. Mohamed Sanu, Brian Poole, and it's going to be... I, I keep hearing these sound effects in my ear. I hate you, RBT. Uh, that is the trade accepted. Mohamed Sanu, Brian Poole, and a 2023rd for Geno Atkins. I don't usually go after like older players because I like to build um, with youth. But if we're in a 4-3 system... With Geno Atkins and Grady Jarrett, that's got to be the best interior defensive line in the league. Like, that's a crazy, crazy combo. And he will regress a little bit. For sure he will. But he's also a 93 overall. So what is he going to regress to over three years? Maybe an 85? So I don't really worry about that one too much. Linebacking core is decent. Not amazing. I still want to trade one of these safeties. 
but they're both under contract, so I don't think it would make a ton of sense to do it right now, considering both of their ages at 25 and 26, respectively. I think what we're going to do is auto-upgrade, hold on to these guys, simulate to the mid-season mark, and take it from there. A lot of people ask me about my XP sliders from time to time, and I made a video on this. It's in the rebuild playlist, uh, and then when I do these, I don't remember exactly what they are, but generally I keep it around 150 because um, I think that's just better for a lot of these positions. Some of the positions I go more on, like offensive line, for example, because um, none of the players ever progress at offensive line. So I find that to be a little bit bothersome. And as I, you know, get more experience doing this, I can figure out what positions upgrade, um, what positions get good. Uh, generally, a good way to determine it is how good are certain players in free agency. So I think around 150 is usually a good spot. Uh, and then, you know, more for a few positions like kicker and punter. Because those also, also do not progress well, usually. Casey's overall corner. Maybe the guy was onto something earlier. Yeah, somebody in the chat said that uh, the Falcons were planning on moving DeMonte Casey to cornerback in uh, 2019. His man coverage is not terrible. He'd be a nickel cornerback. He'd be a slot type. What would it, his overall be? Probably high 70s which would probably be around what Brian Poole is, maybe 77, 76, 77. Could even be higher with good tackling. Let's see. 79, wow. High 70s is right, but he's instantly a good slot cornerback for us. we got to make sure everything's good in uh, special teams, or special, excuse me, not special teams. KZ at slot corner. we got to change the uh, slot wide receiver to be Calvin Ridley. Good sub linebacker. Let's move to depth chart for a minute. And also, yeah, it is uh, Thursday night football, and the Chargers are playing the Chiefs. It's 28-21 in the fourth quarter. So if you see me look over and say, wow, what a catch. That's probably where that is, if there is a great catch. Two and a half minutes to go. But, yeah, we're going to move Calvin Ridley to slot receiver. And, uh... Justin Hardy can back that up just in case anything happens. Injury's off, so nothing should happen. But let's go ahead and simulate to the midseason mark. This is a good team, so I expect good results. I'm going to put it like pretty bluntly. I know they're not performing that well in real life. This should be a good Madden team. This should be a very good Madden team. We're 6-1 and one at the midseason mark, currently in contention for the NFC South. We're in the lead. Grady Jarrett is an impending free agent, and this is already looking like a clear playoff team, whether we win the division or make the wild card. I didn't trade Tevin Coleman. That's frustrating. Well, you know what? It's a dual running back setup anyway. We might as well sign him to a long-term deal and, and be that backup guy. So he's going to come back probably. Yeah, he is back in Atlanta. And we're also going to give Grady Jarrett a seven-year deal. He's only 25. I want to save some money here. So Grady Jarrett is going to be back in Atlanta. Really, really, really good young player. Only 25 years old. Was a beast in the Super Bowl. That's how a lot of people found out about him. But he had a great season up until that point anyway. So we got our top two priorities back. It's a shame I didn't trade Levitre. I'm cool to hang on to Tevin Coleman. Because I know they're going to split carries anyway, as we're going to see in the um, as we're going to see in the off season when we check out these stats, or at the end of the first season, we're going to simulate to the playoffs. I think we're pretty much a lock at this point because we have a good team. We've gotten upgraded. We're performing well already. This has got to be a lock for the playoffs in season one. We are twelve and four and in the wild card because the Saints went thirteen and three. That's crazy. Matt Ryan had an insane season, 4,600 yards almost, 40 touchdowns, only 13 interceptions rushing. Devontae Freeman was great, 1,200 yards on the ground, eight touchdowns. Tevin Coleman also had five touchdowns, so he was decent. Julio Jones crushed it, 100 catches, 1,400 yards to go with 14 touchdowns. Calvin Ridley over 1,000 yards on 81 catches and 10 touchdowns. Austin Hooper, 700 yards, five touchdowns. Everyone was getting involved. I need to get a better third receiver than Justin Hardy. The offensive line performed well. And then defensively, a cornerback 
Robert Alford, CB2, had 111 tackles. How does that even work? Tackles for loss, 17 from Tack McKinley. Eight and a half sacks from Grady Jarrett. Six and a half from Geno Atkins. Five and a half for Tack McKinley off the edge. Interceptions, four for Desmond Trufant led the team. Forced fumbles, only three for the entire squad. But that's all right. What's going on, Attica? And then um, second offense in the NFL. Probably a pretty good defense as well. Top 10, maybe. 20th. Not, not quite top 10. Drew Brees wins MVP. Matt Ryan at number three. Any other Falcons in here? I assume so. Matt Ryan at three for Offensive Player of the Year. Am I missing Devontae Freeman? He had a great year. Defensive Player of the Year is Mark Barron. Dude, I swear this always happened. They're 75 and 80 overall. Stop. Deion Jones at three. Demonte Casey at six. Robert Alford at eight. Tackles is the most important thing for Defensive Player of the Year, I swear. Saquon wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Calvin Ridley at number four. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Roquan Smith. And no, well, actually, Ola Kuhn made it number 10. So we got some upgrade points. I'm not going to be hopping into any of these games here in season one. We're going to try to win the Super Bowl. Um, as Keanu Neal has seven upgrade points. What a season. What a season for him. This is the upgraded team. Matt Ryan, 92 with confidence. A lot of these are with confidence, but Calvin Ridley up to an 85. Star development for the star rookie receiver out of the University of Alabama. Did he always have that? I don't know. Austin Hooper at an 84. How old are you? Like 27? 23? No way. Is he really that young? Was he a rookie last year? No way. Or two years ago? It feels like he's been in the league for longer than that. Good stuff on Austin Hooper. I thought he was tw like 27. Deion Jones up to a 93. Ola Kuhn didn't get much better. Keanu Neal up to a 96. Ricardo Allen, 87. Devontae Casey would be an 83 of free safety. He's an 81 overall. Cornerback, Desmond Trufant sticking around a 93. Robert Alford sticking around a uh, 81. Defensive line is pretty sick. Um, on the interior at least. Got to be, get better than Vic Beasley or he's got to progress or something. Tack McKinley solid at right end, I think. And we are going to advance this week. The Bears are really good. They went 7-9 and nine and made the playoffs, I guess winning their division. And we do beat them 28-14, as uh, I guess you guys can see in the top left. And then now we have our division rival, the New Orleans Saints in the divisional. Winner, Goes to the conference championship and probably the Super Bowl won't be too far out of reach at that point. Because these are probably the two best teams in the NFC. We are going to simulate, see if we can beat the Saints. And we do not. 34-31. A really close game in the divisional. That was probably an insane game. You imagine watching that division matchup in the Super Bowl. Big rivalry. I know Atlanta hates New Orleans and vice versa for sure. Um, Drew Brees threw two picks. Matt Ryan didn't turn over the ball once. Devontae Freeman was exceptional. Michael Thomas was really good. Julio. Des Bryant even with a touchdown. And they let up three sacks. How do we lose this game? Where were the interceptions? Ricardo Allen and Robert Alford. Yet we lost? What happened here with the scoring? Close game. They scored uh, two touchdowns in the second quarter. Shut us out. And we came back and it just wasn't enough. Wow. That is unfortunate. It doesn't really matter too much. Is uh, I'm sure we're going to be able to, uh, to uh, win here in season number two. And uh, it's going to be a successful season. I'm confident. That was a good season one. I didn't, that's why I've kind of been putting off this rebuild because the team is good and I know it's going to perform well in simulation. So when we hop in here, we add some pieces. Obviously, there's going to be some drafting. Obviously, there's going to be some signings. But this is a team that has the pieces together and they're, they're just having an off year. They're just having a bad year. It happens. It happens to the best of the teams that you'll see in the NFL from time to time. I don't know how much coaching plays a factor, but injuries have been a big part of it. Frank Clark is available. The Dolphins are pursuing him heavily. Eric Reed is here. I know I didn't trade for Frank Clark. I didn't think he'd be available in free agency. 
Now, I think he'd be a better fit off the edge than Vic Beasley would be for us. And we could get him at a fairly cheap contract. Get him six years, maybe. I mean, when you're paying for an edge rusher that could be argued that he is premier, especially with that age and production, $8 million is nothing to pay per year salary-wise, especially when we have it. And it, cap hit of $9 million first year, 127 points. We could outbuild the, uh, outbid the Dolphins there. That is something that could easily happen. I think that'd be good for our team. 86 overall. Normal development is kind of annoying, but we are going to simulate to the drafts here. What positions am I looking to improve upon? Left guard, right guard, right tackle, wide receiver, outside linebacker. We got Frank Clark. That's cool. Vic Beasley is a player that could potentially be traded and cornerback. So cornerback, linebacker, offensive line, wide receiver. We're going to pick pretty late here in the first round. Oh, we do have a pick from the uh, Raiders, actually. And that is going to be at number seven overall. So let's go ahead and simulate to that pick. As uh, the Titans get a really solid edge rusher out of USC. And we are on the clock. I'm seeing these for the first time. There's a decent-looking cornerback. I could pause. I'm not really going to worry about it. He's going to be a solid player. Not amazing. Ahmad Newton looks pretty good. Not quite strong enough for my liking on the offensive line. Avery Montgomery looks basically like a linebacker. He's only 5'10", 215, but he's not that fast. Simon Morrow, not that strong. That is uh, annoying. George Flowers, not fast. This is kind of a weak draft class for what we need, I'm going to be honest. Like, there could be some good players in here. But I almost wonder if we'd be better off just trading this pick away. I think we would be. My offers for the pick are going to be bad. That's just the way it goes. They're going to be bad offers. Like, I clearly don't want any of these. There's no reason. So I think what I'm going to do is now pause the draft, look to trade this pick, and I think a really good spot to trade it would be a move that I've made on a few occasions, and that is for a Joel Batonio. We could get Kevin Zeitler. I just I know he regresses so sharply in this. Could we get Joel Batonio? Just doing that? No. That's good. That's good that that's not accepted because that's pretty ridiculous. I would do that, though. Two first rounds, Joel Batonio. Because we'd be getting a first round. So it's what would we give up? Hmm. I don't know how good the rest of this draft is. I don't really want to do that. I would, however, take your first next year. Hmm. It's like they value Joel Batonio now for some reason. They used to not so much. What about a second? And a third. Hmm. What do we do here? I don't really want to give up. It'd be worth it. Ah. Uh. I mean, the Browns... The... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be trading... I'll be trading a first plus a fourth and a fifth maybe for Joel. The way I'm going to rationalize it is... Am I going to draft a player that's ever going to get as good as him on the offensive line? No. It just won't happen. So I'm cool with giving up that value for a franchise guard there as we simulate now to the end of the first round. Chargers get a pretty bad cornerback at a USC. And we are on the board. I just don't want 
any of these guys really wade pounds is not that bad only 23 he'll probably be like a 78 overall and then stay that the entire rebuild i think i'm gonna take george francis though fits a scheme very strong but he's an agile type which leads me to believe that he's versatile and solid good top skills as well we're gonna take him 77 overall with normal development ranked number 17 in the class but that's like that's a first round pick he's number 17 in the class and he's a 77 overall. So, I mean, the Joel Batonio trade just even looks better now at this point. The Chargers have scored, by the way, with four seconds to go. And um, and they're going for two, apparently. That's pretty crazy. I might even play the audio so you guys can hear it. Because Philip Rivers threw to the right side of the end zone. Pass complete to, of course, Mike Williams. He's been a stud. That ball was bobbling a little bit, but I think he definitely had control. Could take this player. 21 reps? No. These are things that matter. KJ Gayton. 4-4-3 speed at 6 foot 1. I'm going to take this player. 77 overall normal development, ranked number 15. We took him at number 60. Yeah, I mean, he just looked too good. Short route running is terrible, but... Great speed, acceleration, catching deep route running. We saw he had high release earlier, 89. He's not going to be wearing number 11 because we have a number 11 and a Tulio Jones, and he's not going anywhere anytime soon. But that is a great receiver number three to add. As, um, man, the Chargers are just killing themselves in this draft. But uh, we'll have to see. I think the ruling on the field is going to stand on that touchdown. This looks like a decent zone corner. He's not fast. And the Chargers are going for two. This looks like another good receiver. 4-3-1 speed at 5-10 with those numbers. No way he's a fourth round player. 76 overall normal development. Douglas Katus, ranked number 20 in the class. He looks really, really solid. Very similar player to the guy we just drafted, to be fair. Chargers 5 for 7 on two-point conversions so far. And this would win the game. They can't, don't think they can hang in a, in overtime with the Chiefs. And I probably don't blame them. I like the aggression. Phillip Rivers dropped back to throw. Lobs it up. Wide open for Mike Williams. How do you leave the best receiver on the field wide open? Two-point conversion successful. And the Chargers are likely going to win this game 29-28 with only four seconds remaining. Unbelievable. Mike Williams had an, an insane game. He was exactly who the Chargers were going to throw the ball to. Had to be pretty obvious. And the Chiefs defense just didn't even have an answer. It's like they didn't try. He was wide open in the back of the end zone. He was uh, lined up split right with, I think that was Tyrell Williams. And he just ran a corner route. It wasn't even like a natural pick. Just it looks like the Chiefs were trying to play coverage on um like three guys on Tyrell Williams. Mike Mike Williams wide open. No one even close. I'm sure you guys saw the play. As this is gonna go up on 12 14, and this is of course the 13th when uh, we're watching this. Unbelievable. So uh, that's pretty fun. All these players look like they're terrible now. And the Chiefs can't believe it. But how would they be able to? They didn't they didn't even play anything. The secondary, just terrible. Just absolutely terrible. They didn't they didn't have any idea how to defend the corner. And it was it was so obvious. Now the game's not over. You know. Patrick Mahomes has a cannon. I wouldn't be surprised if the Chargers try a squib here just to get time off, and they're going to. And that's just going to bounce. They're going to try and return it. Looks like that's going to be the game. Ron Parker just kind of throws it out of bounds. Probably not the way you want to do that. I don't know. I, that's that's weird. <laughs> so they don't get a chance. The game is over. And uh, the Chief, Char, Chiefs get upset by the Chargers at home. No way I thought that was going to happen. These Thursday night home matchups have been just slaughters in general the entire season. Great draft for us, by the way. Um, but this time, the Chargers come back. They're a good team. They've flown under the radar for whatever reason, even though they are so solid. And it's just, um, wow. 
Good win by the Chargers on primetime in Kansas City at Arrowhead. That is a big, big victory. But, of course, we're back to the Falcons rebuild now. That's why you guys clicked on the video. That's why you're watching. You want to see what happens in this, I'm sure. So we are right back to it. Got to upgrade Fusco, Fusco. And we have a really good receiving combo at 3 and 4, Katus and Gaten. What's the development looking like here? Are they both normal? They're both normal. Defensively, we're looking solid. We didn't upgrade at outside linebacker, which is something I wanted to do. And it looks like we're still good at cornerback. DeMonte Casey's playing CB2 now. Robert Alford regressed. Damn, the Falcons got Dante Dion. When did that happen? Isaiah Oliver. I mean, he's just kind of a weird one. He's just not very good in the game. But I feel like he could upgrade well if we played him. So I think what I'm going to do here is cut Robert Alford. Not a good move. I'm going to want to trade him if I can. We're going to go on to uh, Season 2. Isaiah Oliver at cornerback 3 does not bother me at all. Does not bother me at all. So we're going to try that. Do we still have a... No. Okay. Does anyone want Robert Alford? Yeah, already there's interest. So where would we trade him and for what? I'm looking really for an outside linebacker. What about Jawan Bentley? What is his overall in this? 76. All right, boom. Kind of a weird one, something I've never done before. But it's going to be Robert Alford straight up for Jawan Bentley. And I, he was great with the Patriots before getting injured. He's going to slide in at right outside linebacker. Only 23 years old. And his overall should bump up to a 79, maybe even an 80. So I think that's pretty good value for him. And he is... An 80 overall. Linebacking core looks pretty great. Kind of. <laughs> Got Isaiah Oliver now. The reason why I really went in on Isaiah Oliver, who has quick development, is because it only costs 6,000 XP for him to get upgraded, like one skill point. That's a super, super low amount. He's only 22. I would have done this last year had I known, because it probably would have been even cheaper. The team is in a really good spot, and we're only getting better. Appreciate you guys being here, by the way. Uh, I don't know what I just... I just caught a real big Southern draw when I was saying that. Uh, interesting. And then uh, as far as specialist goes, KZ, slot corner. That would make Isaiah Oliver CB2. And then we'll have Gaten at slot receiver. Daniel Jones, Frank Clark rushing. Ooh, Vic Beasley is a player I can trade. Do we want to do that? Vic Beasley's a guy that I I would want to move. And what would I get? It'd be a right guard, correct? Yes. Or, well, I could trade for a left guard and then slide him over, depending on the value there. Is there going to be... Double green would be incredible from a team with a good offensive line. Now, we're not going to get it but could I trade for something individually? Could I acquire Quentin Nelson? Darius Leonard would be a cool one. I've never traded for him before. I don't know how possible this would be. I know we just traded for Juwan Bentley. i just just curious. How easy is it, is it to acquire Quentin Nelson? Unbelievably easy. That Madden's got to fix this. But I am gonna I am gonna make a move. I'll give him a future too, just to make this look a little bit more even. Brandon Fusco, or Fusco, or who cares, Go. He's off the team now. Future second-round pick for Quentin Nelson, who's going to slide over to right guard. And then we're going to add in Vic Beasley, try to move him. If you're a Falcons fan, did I say that Falcons weird? If you're a Falcons fan and you love Vic Beasley, sorry. It's not sorry. He's just, uh, we we have Frank Clark now. Kevin Byer doesn't help. Jarrell Casey doesn't help. Adoree Jackson 
doesn't help. Corey Davis, I don't want. What what do I what do I even need? What would I need? I don't think anything. We're gonna hold on to Vic Beasley for right now. He'll just be good depth for the moment. He'll just be good depth. He's a good player. Ish. 80 overall. I'll take it. Could be worse. So this is the team for season number two. Ricardo Allen, Keanu Neal, Desmond Trufant. We got Demonte Kesey playing cornerback now. Demonte Kesey. Um, Isaiah Oliver at CB3. Also Dante Dion. Or Dion. Defensive line, solid. Tack McKinley, Geno Atkins, Grady Jarrett, Frank Clark, Vic Beasley. With Juwan Bentley. I don't know what possessed me to get him, but I want to try it out. Deion Jones, Devondre Campbell. Then offensively, uh, Schweitzer is not going to play because we traded for Quentin Nelson. I'm like, what the hell? How did I... How is Schweitzer on this team? Schweitzer? Nah. Uh-uh. It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be... Obviously, big Q, Quentin Nelson, a right guard. Got Francis, we draft him in a right tackle. This is a pretty good team. And I like these rookie receivers, Katus and Gaten, a.k.a. Big Fat Caboose, and he's Gaten. Hilarious jokes, I know. Um, we do need a backup quarterback. Just in case Matty Ice needs some ice on an injury. Larry Fitz is here. Chewbacca L with the Twitch Prime sub. Wow. Unbelievable. Oh, the Blaine train. The Blaine plane. The Blaine pain. Blaine Gabbard. After me supporting Chewbacca Lemma on Twitch for months. Unreciprocated, unrequited love. He finally returns a favor and it's a Twitch Prime. My heart melts. Appreciate you, Chewy. Time for the regular season. I should have just sent him to the midseason mark. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. I just owe you one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I said that. Um, yeah, great to see you're doing this out of the goodness of your heart for a good pal, Chewy. Thanks. Thanks. Oop, not the playoffs. Midseason mark. Here we go. How good is this squad going to be? Four, two, and one. It's it's the best in the NFC South, I guess. <laughs> that is uh, interesting to say the least. Spend some coach XP. Got to be offensive line. Got to be. Got to be at this point. And let's go ahead and upgrade players. Ricardo Allen's going to be a free agent. As a boost, those guys. Look, Isaiah Oliver with two experience points, two skill points. That's big. That's why we're playing him. That's the Keanu Neal. What am I talking about? I said Ricardo Allen. I meant Keanu Neal uh, before anyone tries to correct me. Deion Jones, Austin Hooper, Devondre Campbell, Matt Bosher, Vic Beasley. I should have traded Vic Beasley. Unfortunate. Keanu Neal's coming back. He's a 98 overall, only 24 years old, star development. He's face scanning the game finally. I didn't think that was a thing. Six years. 57 million. He's back. Deion Jones has super low block shed, but he's good everywhere else. And he is back. Austin Hooper is a player I definitely want to re-sign. Let's give him a six-year deal, get him until he's 30. Lower the money a bit because it's job security. And then Devondre Campbell, only 26 years old. It feels like he's 30 for some reason. No face scan for him, unfortunate. I mean, I'd give him a, I'd give him a four-year deal. I don't think he's gonna want it. Yeah, he wants job security, and I'm not willing to offer it. I'm just not. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it at all. But it's playoff time, baby. This got to be a playoff team. Has to be. We're too good, too solid for it not to be. And here we are. We didn't make the playoffs. 
Finished 8-7-1. and one. The Panthers came out of nowhere and went 12-4. and four. It just stings, is all I can say. Matty Ice took a step back this year, but still a solid season. I'll take that. Devontae Freeman took a step back this year. Got a bunch of carries. Yards per carry is just not there, even with a way better offensive line. Julio is putting up Julio of past year's numbers with low touchdowns. Austin Hooper had 10 somehow. KJ Gayton had 7. Where was the caboose? He had no catches. Sad. Offensive line was good. I don't really know what happened here. Demonte Casey led our team in tackles. Also had 8 tackles for loss. 15 from Tack McKinley led the team, though. Then quarterback sacks, 9 from Grady Jarrett, 7 from Geno Atkins and Frank Clark. Tack McKinley at 5. We're getting almost no pressure. But we're forcing a few turnovers. Isaiah Oliver with three picks is good to see. We kind of played a little bit of a gamble by starting him. So, um, I'll take that. David Ledford. The Patriots drafted a quarterback who wins the MVP in his first year. Uh, okay. Scott Kaufman. What is going on here? What team am I? I am the uh, Falcons. Matt Ryan finishes in 10th for Offense Player of the Year. Luke Keekley, no Falcons. Offense Rookie of the Year, Scott Kaufman. KJ Gayton at 4. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Tank Yeast. You mean Tank Beast? <laughs> what a ridiculous name. No Falcons. How weird. How weird. That's all I can say. Just weird. We underperformed. I don't know how this team didn't, didn't make the playoffs. I really don't know what to tell you. Because that's, that's ridiculous, in my opinion. But I guess we'll come back in year three and, and try. You know what? It's probably because I made the team a lot worse. Here's Devondre Campbell. I'm going to franchise tag him as the Jags beat the Packers 28-14 in the Super Bowl. You know what? It was probably Blaine Gabbard. So, um... I will offer you one year. Oh no, he's going to decline. You're not testing free agency, so sorry. You're going to get franchise tagged. Matt Bosher, you are going to get an extension. Four years, you should be re-signing happily. And then I'm cool on the rest. Goodbye, Vic Beasley, we will miss you. And we're to the offseason. Where do we need to get better? We don't have a ton of money. Alex Mack is down to an 81. How did I miss this? Good Lord. Minus nine impact block. Minus seven awareness. Minus nine run block. Minus four pass block. I hate regression with a passion. He's still playing like one of the best centers in the league. And he's trash now. Kareem Hunt is here. Chris Jones is here. We don't need him. He's a beast. I don't know what the Chiefs are doing. Tajay Sharp is here. I'm going to stick with what we have. Cody Whitehair, you are Alex Mack now. Welcome. That's got to be a sign. I'm not going to change anything here. Oh, my goodness. It's ATH. <laughs> oh, I, gotta, I wish I could. I need to change that. Zombie thing. My guy, ATH, a.k.a. Dumb Kim, seven months in a row with the resub, says seven months since we have loved each other. I think about you every day, Dumb Kim. You may be all the way in South Korea, but you're in my heart forever. And I mean that. Okay. Um, is Greg the leg the play? Matt Bryant is down to a 77 overall. No one wants Greg Zerline. So I'm in on that. And it is time for stage two. We got Cody Whitehair and Greg Zerline. So that's unfortunate that Matt Bryant now doesn't have a job. Quick development. Oh, yeah, you're 45, though. Goodbye, Matt Bryant. We're replacing you with a, a less bald, slightly, slightly younger player. 
and it is time for the draft. And I know it's like, we have Alex Mack. We've never done Cody Whitehair. Shut up. Shut up. Time for the draft. What do we need? Hold on. Hold on. Offensive line is fine. I mean, if there's a top receiver on the board at my pick, I might take one. Same thing with a quarterback. Same thing with linebacker. Same thing with corner. Let's go. We pick at number 19. It's not a very valuable pick. Crandall Gordon. Crandall. I don't like that name at all. James Anger looks decent, although I would say Drew Rollins out of Oregon looks to be the best quarterback in the class. Let's check positions of need before we go drafting a safety. So, cornerback is a disaster. Early, just so we're on the same page there. An absolute disaster. Outside linebacker, Jabari Kreiner looks okay. Howard Whittington looks really good. I wouldn't even mind Anthony Bromel either out of Harvard. Left outside linebacker, Rashawn Hall. 4-5-3 speed. I know we have Juwan Bentley. He looks really solid, though. So does Gerard Hunter out of Cincinnati, to be fair. 4-8-3 uh, speed is not great. I'm not looking for offensive line. What about wide receiver? Reggie Carter out of Wisconsin. Second round guy. He skipped the comma. He said, Roger Goodell, go F yourself. <laughs> That's a player that I want to draft badly. How far down the board is he? Like really far. We're gonna we're gonna certainly come back up. Crandall is your name, Crow? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Uh I'm gonna draft this outside linebacker because he looks really, really good. Could be a potential Devondre Campbell replacement. Twenty two years old, six foot one, two twenty seven out of Louisville. Fantastic speed, great vertical, very agile, great broad jump, explosive player. With good top three skills, decent bench press. Welcome to the team, Rashawn Hall. He is ranked number 11 in the class at 80 overall. He's ranked number 11. Only normal development, which kind of is annoying. He is an 80, to be fair. 81 tackle, 88 speed, 81 zone coverage. Block shed is real low at a 67. He's almost like Deion Jones V2. That's what this is. We just drafted Deion Jones. That's, that's the exact player who we drafted. <laughs> it's all right. 99. 99 isn't a super weird uh, linebacker number, especially for an outside linebacker. What is with this draft class? I'm seeing 80s fly off the board. What is the name of that receiver? He's at the very end of the second round. I don't want him to go earlier. He looked really, really, really good. You know what? Killian Gaffney out of Utah looks solid, too. His name is Reggie Carter. Twenty-three. Still haven't won the Super Bowl. I we're getting there. We're getting there. You know what? Maybe it's it's tonight with guys like you. It's RBT, Chewy, finally supporting me back. And you know what? It feels great. It's giving me the confidence <laughs> to uh, come out here and, and build a winning team. I almost want to trade up an 80 overall running back. Goes to the Bengals. Fisher Glover. Great name. I feel like this guy's going to be available at our pick. It's looking good. Martinez Motes. Ah, oh, no! 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 I've spilled coke on me in a fit of rage. What a disaster. I mean, Brancola. What a disaster. He's an 80 overall. F. F's in the chat for Reggie Carter and me spilling Brancola in my crotch area. Now people are going to think I piss soda. Sody Pop. Dude, he goes... 
Sanchez, Snow, Cokehead. And we're on the board at number 19. There's quarterback still here. I might make nut if some of these players are good. Wow, you look insane at safety. Demond Beasley. Killian Gaffney's here. He looks good, too. And would fit our need in the slot. Jalen Gardner looks really solid. There are a lot of really good players here. This draft class is loaded. I almost want to take Demond Beasley. Beasley. Fuck it, who cares? Because he just looks incredible. Also, could he play linebacker? He looks so good. I'm going to take him. 80 overall, quick development. Number nine in the class. Only 74 zone coverage. 73 block shed. What's your tackle? Am I missing it here? 89? Really? We're going to have to figure out what we do with these players. Um, hold on. We're going to pause the draft. I want to trade back up. With the 49ers. Give me that pick. They need a right outside linebacker. I know an outside linebacker. His name is Devondre Campbell. Hell yeah. Interesting. Devondre Campbell is straight up for um, the 53rd pick. It makes, it makes a lot of sense, given we have Juwan Bentley. We have the linebacker we drafted in the first round this time. We have that safety we drafted that could play linebacker. And now I'm thinking about taking a quarterback for no reason, just because he looks sick, and he could be the uh, replacement to Matt Ryan. And I'm going to take him, actually. 79 overall, quick development, ranked number 19 in the class. We took him at 53. He's really good. 91 throw power, 80 deep, 86 medium, 88 short. Good throw under pressure, play action, throw on the run. Awareness is pretty high. Decent speed. He honestly feels like Matt Ryan 2.0. Like Matt Ryan when he was drafted. And I almost want to trade up again. And take a receiver. Pat's on the board. What do they need? They need a middle linebacker, right tackle, D-tackle, right outside linebacker, fullback. Okay. We could give you Jawan Bentley back. <laughs> I almost want to try this. How will piece, This class is real strong. This is going to work. Can I also pick up something else? Like a... I wouldn't need, really need a third. Can I get a first next year? No! That's almost going to go through? I know it's the Patriots, so they're going to try to win the Super Bowl, but that's still valuable. Oh my god, it's going to go through. Juwan Bentley, a 5 and a 6 for a second this year and a first next year from the Patriots. Pretty solid move for us, and we have a our third pick in a row in the third and second round here. And I think I'm going to take the receiver, Killian Gaffney. Interesting. Yo, this class is OP. It really is. I'm going to take Killian Gaffney here and then maybe come back. 75 overall, rank number 37. He's good too. Good short route running. Good route running in general. Catching isn't amazing. Overall, he's not bad. I'm going to come back for that other receiver, though. He should be available in the fourth round. Based on him being a fifth-round player. Now, that's not a certainty. But I would say it's likely. And we would be very unlucky for him not to be here. it's just it's not my day today it's just not my day 
Who else is here? Anyone worth having? I don't see you traded up for those other players, but didn't this time? I don't know. Uh, unfortunate. What are you going to do? Hate to see it. That's going to be the end of the draft. I need to see where some of these players went. I, we're going to check out this draft recap and see just how incredible this class was. Because we took an 80 overall, and he wasn't even a top 15 player in the class. Like, we did, a, we had a really, really good draft, obviously. 379 overall or higher players. And we only had one first round pick to accomplish that. So we did well in that regard. I also assume that that receiver went earlier in the fourth round. Was this him, Andre Ivy? I don't think so. Oh, here he was. He went, oh, would you believe it? Two picks before us. He's a 78 overall at a North Dakota available all the way here in the fifth round. And you know who he looks like is five points, Vids. If you guys know five points, he looks exactly like him. Yo, Eagles, please clip this and label it five points, Vids. And let him know that he is in Madden. I'm sure he will be very excited to know. He is a sick receiver at a North Dakota. Yeah. There you go. Five points, Vids. You play in the Vikings. He's tiny. Five points, like 5'9". That's probably... He's 5'9", 196. That's got to be exactly five points. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's check out this entire class. Because it looks like it was a ridiculous class. Also, if anyone caught the Mike Francesa reference, that would have been amazing. I don't think anyone did. So the top player is only an 81 overall, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's six 81s. Seven, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80s. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where's this wide receiver? We know he was an 80 overall. Reggie Carter, superstar development. Oh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. Nice route, nice deep route running as well. Um, he's so good. <laughs> he's so good. Well, 85 speed kind of sucks, but he's really, really good besides that. John Terrius Cujo, what a name. Speed doesn't really matter in simulation, I don't think. He would have fit in nicely. And uh, let's see here. We got to figure out where players are playing. I think Damon Beasley is going to be a decent right outside linebacker. I know that seems crazy, but he has a build for it, dude. He's 5'11", which is a little bit, a little bit short. 226, which is a little bit light. We're going to give him We're going to give him 59. What overall is Demond Beasley a right outside linebacker? We're taking a gamble here cuz we traded Jawan Bentley. He's a 79. So we lost out on um two overall points, but he is younger and he has quick development, so it's probably worth it. You could say. I guess. I don't know. It took an interesting turn. And I know Keanu Neal probably could play linebacker. And he would fit the, the mold a little bit better. Six foot. But if you look at his ratings. He also has insane pursuit. Hit power tackle. No actually he wouldn't. Like he would be higher overall just because he's way better. But Beasley fits linebacker way more than Keanu Neal. I was mistaken about that initially. Trade all I can for one of those. All right, people seem like they want me to trade for Reggie Carter. Oh, yeah, we drafted that quarterback. 
I forgot about that. Why did I do that? <laughs> Is Matt Ryan still, like, not still the guy? I think maybe he is the guy. All right. What would it take to get your 80 overall superstar development wide receiver? They need a quarterback. Dude, they would. They like both of them. Oh, man. Do we put Matt Ryan in here? I think absolutely not. They don't even want Rollins, which means they're not going to want Matt Ryan. Reggie Carter is going to be insanely hard to trade for. And I'm not sure why this name sounds so familiar to me. I almost want to say that um, that's a player like one of Mr. Hur uh, Mr. Hurricane series or something. But I can't confirm. I can already tell you guys it's not happening. There's just no way. They don't want any of those guys? Wild. Uh, they don't need a wide receiver. Like, are they smoking meth, by the way? They don't need a receiver. Look at their receivers. They're like, yeah, we need a receiver. It's our fourth need. Really? Because you have three pretty solid ones, with the oldest being 28. Like, that's not a... That's not wild. What do they need here? They need a left guard. Obviously, that's their number one need. They need a center more than they need another receiver. They need a tackle. Yeah, they have that on there. Okay, this seems actually insane. You could say maybe they need an outside linebacker, corner. No, this team's just insane. The Redskins are really good. Um, But yeah, I, I think our team's really good. We're at 95 offense, 91 defense. And we still have a lot of these players that have high potential and are going to perform well. Our receiving core isn't amazing, but it's also far from bad. It's an interesting spot because outside of Julio Jones, I mean, Calvin Ridley is not up to a 90 yet. And then we don't really have much after that, but they're not bad. They're in the high 70s. We should have... I should have traded up, dude. I just should have played it safe. Reggie Carter's a miss. Um, okay. All right, let's simulate to the midseason mark in season number three and see if we can make the playoffs. You'd have to assume yes, but based on Madden simulation, probably not for whatever reason. We are 4-2-1. Oh my god, I'm getting flashbacks. After a 20-20 tie to the Broncos. I'm getting flashbacks to last year. Getting PTSD. Let's go ahead and upgrade the team. Simulate to the playoffs. Come on. Falcons. Can we please? Can we please? Yes. We've made it. 12, 3, and 1. We won out. Matt Ryan, a great year. Bounce back. He's like, oh shit, I might be traded. I gotta be good now. And he came back with a vengeance. So I like that. Big, 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 big year for him. Devontae Freeman bounced back as well, receiving Julio. Had 18 touchdowns. He said, hey, Bengal, you're talking about me? I had three touchdowns last year. Guess what? How do you like 18? And I'm I like 18 a lot. 18 is an insanely high number. How do you catch 18 touchdowns? What are you, what are you, Randy Moss? Kevin Ridley, pretty good year as well. 18. 18 blocking pretty good from the offensive line can't really complain Deion Jones had a really really good season 
Tack McKinley had 19 tackles for loss. Unreal. 12 sacks for Grady Jarrett, who's been a beast this entire time. Interceptions, uh, really not that many. Damon Beasley got one. The rookie, now linebacker, safety turn linebacker out of Oklahoma. Only two forced fumbles. Looks like no defensive touchdowns, but at least two safeties. Grady Jarrett and Tack McKinley. Yearly award. Show me MVP. David Ledford. What are you... Matt Ryan at number three. No other Falcons. NFC Offense Player of the Year. Todd Gurley, Matt Ryan at two. No other Falcons. Defense Player of the Year. B Wags. Deion Jones at two. No other Falcons. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Reggie Carter. Why don't you just shoot me in the head? Rub it in my face. Teabag my dead body. Like, that's what, that, that's what this has been. Killian Gaffney at number three. Yeah, great. Great. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jason Duncan. Rashawn Hall at number two. I kind of forgot he was a rookie, to be honest. I forgot we even drafted him. And Demond Beasley at number nine. Should have traded up for Carter. Yeah. I know. <laughs> RBT would have. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is playoff time. And we are trying to secure the bag here, as the as the kids are saying nowadays. Oh, cringe. Ugh, I hated that. I don't care. Uh, team has been upgraded, and this will be the team for the playoffs. We have a divisional matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. Birds versus birds. And it's definitely the word. Great offensive line. Alex Mack is still here. He's veteran leadership, you could say. Um... How did Killian Gaffney finish third, by the way? What did you do? Because there's no way he caught passes. Let's get that right off the table. There's no... He had 42 catches? How? How did he even play? He was, he was probably the slot receiver. Um, and then defensively, it's a solid team. We can't even upgrade Keanu Neal anymore. Not the best team I've built, I don't think. But it is solid for sure. Can't say that it's not. And offensively, it's a great offense. It really is. But uh, it is Seahawks, Falcons, S Divisional. We are way better than them. So, yes, I am very ready for this loss. I, like, I don't know if you knew this. I'm not very good at the game, right? And I like to win a lot. If you've ever been in my Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash bangle, link in the description. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already. Streaming live now. Um, I like to win a lot. And I stream Call of Duty fairly frequently. Uh, I guess you could say I'm pretty good. And I take it way too seriously. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't play Madden anymore. Like I haven't in a few years. Like actually playing people online. So Call of Duty is uh, what gets my competitive juices flowing. As we're going to take an early 7-0 lead here in the fourth quarter. Defense, you do whatever except for allowing touchdowns. Hate to see it, but we're going to convert with a red zone opportunity, making it 14-7. Trying to drive back down the field. Two-minute drill. We're not going to hop in just yet. Big third down, make a stop. All right, well, we'll hop in now in the red zone. I really like to, uh, to use her. I don't know if you guys watch Giants franchise. I'm kind of good at it this year. And I'm not good at it in Ozark State Dynasty, the other NCAA series on my channel. Oh, went to the flat. I didn't really see that one coming. 23 seconds left in the first half. I really thought I was going to get a user pick there. Seahawks trying to convert. Russell Wilson at a shotgun. Thought we had somebody jump off sides there. He's going to roll out. And right into the waiting arms of Tack McKinley. They have no timeouts. They're lining back up. We're going to blitz heavy. Going to try to get pressure. Sack him. I'm going to need good man coverage here. He's going to throw short to Luke Wilson. And that will be the end of the first half. The defense holds strong. And now we're going into the second half. Beautiful. All right, I don't know why moments stop there. Uh, but we're back into it. Dude, stop giving me these defensive moments. Why can't my defense, 95 overall, step up 
and stop Seattle. Pinch. Run, commit, middle. Oh, they're going to throw? What are you doing, Ricardo? This is why I get mad at the game. They say Luke Wilson? I will, who's Wilson that went two L's? Did it not say Wilson? Am I wrong? I thought it said Wilson. I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going on. It's apparently not. But also, I need to look in the replay. What do you mean after the play ends? The play has ended. Show me the play. What do you mean? Oh, we, we're in the third quarter now. That was ridiculous. He stopped moving. I am racist. I think all white people look exactly the same. That's how I confuse that so easily. <laughs> um, all right, another defensive moment. Maybe I'll have to use her, Ricardo Allen, so he actually does what he's supposed to do. And that is cover Trey Madden, I believe, out of the backfield. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Excuse my language. What a crisp route. I've never seen a better route in my life. I kind of look like RBT. I don't. Oh, I get it. It's a joke. Get there. Oh, that's my fault. Man, I, I, I said I was going to use a Ricardo Allen. I've screwed up on two plays in a row. Terrible. It's 21-21, and we didn't convert. Dude, what's up with our offense? I just want to score touchdowns. Checking down to Calvin Ridley. Okay. I really am just going to chew clock here, I think. Maybe someone's going to get open. I'm really, I'm just trying to play this like it's NCAA. I know I'm going to roll out. Just throw to the running back. There's a flag. Are we really going to get called for a holding when the ball's already in the air? That's a ridiculously bad call. It's going to be third and 14 now. You don't, it doesn't, the play is already over. For Jake Matthews there. How are you going to call him when the ball's already in the air? I suck. Did anything get open and I just missed it? I'm sure, I'm sure something was wide open. But as you guys know, I'm a terrific punter. It is somehow my best quality. And I put it right on the money. <laughs> Pinned him deep. Um, all right, now we have to make a big stop. I wasn't anticipating hopping in the game. I know a lot of people love to comment, you gotta stick to rebuilds. You're terrible at the game. I don't care even at all. I like, I'm only addressing it so you're aware. I don't even come close to caring. They're gonna go deep. Desmond Trufant, interception. Ball's going back the other way. That was quick. That was a great defensive stop. I, I know triangle. I didn't like it. I want to test out the wheels. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Luke Wilson with the tackle. Um... All right, let's go ahead and streak there. Earl Thomas is not going to be good. Doesn't matter. We're going up to Julio. Make the play! Please catch the ball. You're going up against Shaquille Griffin. He's okay. You are Julio Jones. You had 18 touchdowns this year. Unbelievably. Third and four. Throwing that ball. I, all Madden default sliders also suck. Um, I would go for it, but who could resist 
another great punt. Like, oh, check this out. Oh my god. Talk about a boomer. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, there goes my credibility as a great punter. It bounces back into the end zone. Terrible. That never happens. You guys know. I'm an elite punter. <laughs> the best on YouTube by far. And Twitch. Ah! <laughs> Isaiah Oliver got cooked by Luke Wilson. Tyler Croft. All right. Let me get a user pick. All right, there it is. Easy reads. User pick. If you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to just get better field positioning and score a touchdown and finally end the game. We're going to run the ball. Can't screw that up, right? What is that? What is that? No, we're gonna... We're gonna take a look at that. Look at this. Look, look at how stupid this is. Good juke back. I juke back to follow the block. That's open. I've done it. I've done a successful juke. And then he turns back for some reason to get into the animation for the Bobby Wagner tackle. Trash. Trash. These are like I know it's it's a little thing like that, but that's like an eight yard carry. Instead it's three. Because the game's animations aren't that good. And it's just like it's upsetting. It's just upsetting. We're gonna play action. We're gonna throw it away. Nothing really got open. Probably should have run it there. Not sure why I audible to play action. All right, second and ten. We're gonna spin back, reverse field, just to line it up. That's our final timeout. And uh, this run will take us to the promised land. It's going to be a field goal to win. Now, here's the issue. You guys know how I'm a great punter? I'm a less of a great field goal kicker. That's my issue. Not a great kicker. I think I should be able to make this one, though. But I, is, kicking is not my strong suit. <laughs> really setting the scene for a miss here. With the wind somehow in a dome. Oh, and he's, I'm going to drill it. Maybe. That's blockable. That's the only thing that worries me. That's blockable. And they just would, right? The CPU would in this situation. They can't ice me. It's not about that. I'll miss just just because. That's just what I do. Oh, my goodness. He's done it. Absolute ice in my veins. Have you ever seen something more clutch? What a kick. Take notes, kickers from around the league. That's how it's done. Straight through the uprights, splitting the sticks. Unbelievable effort. Have you guys ever been more impressed? Hey, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. That goes for all you on Twitch, too. You got Twitch Prime? You got Amazon Prime? You use Twitch Prime? You get it on your account? Uh, you hit the subscribe button, and then boom, you subscribe to the channel. You get subscriber benefits. You get a wonderful experience. And I'll tell you what, man. Super Bowl, Tampa Bay. We got the uh, Cleveland Browns on the schedule, man. Tell you what, man. When you got the Atlanta Falcons, a, a, a flight, a flightful bird. I'll tell you what, man. You go in there to Cleveland. You're going to beat that Browns team. You're going to beat them nine times out of ten. I'll tell you what, man. If you... 
if you go in there and you you play with your good football players, I mean, it's, tell you what, man, there's there's nothing holding you back. It's gonna be a victory every time, and that's just that's just all there is to it, man. All right, let's get this victory. Let's get this victory. What do you guys think of the John Gruden impression? Pretty, pretty bad. All right. Definitely clip that so I can hear what it sounds like. Definitely clip it. Uh, oh, yeah, we're in the Super Bowl. Uh, let's let's try to score. Did I still do Photoshop for, like, thumbnails and stuff? But not, like, I don't do designs or anything like that. They're blitzing! I don't handle pressure well. Of course there's another hold... What a catch by Julio. Didn't matter at that point. Holding offense. That's great. Quentin Nelson. Can you guys not hold? What is going on? Give me a block, Luke Wilson. No? All right. Did I lose interest or time? Uh, both, Panda. With the Photoshop stuff? Both. Luke Wilson, inside. <laughs> That's just gotta be the new meme. Every white tight end is Luke Wilson. <laughs> of course, Austin Hooper down at the 10-yard line. Third and inches. When do you run the ball? That's a good question. There we go. All right. We are in prime. Score a touchdown on the opening drive to take the lead. Territory. Well, I mean, what do you do there? Run right at him? That's a good call. Series, do I like more Ozark or Giant? 100% Ozark. 100%. It's not even close right now. I was going to lob it up to the open slant. And Miles Garrett had to be annoying and get pressure. Bring me down. Matt Ryan, slow-ass release. Just frustrating. Uh, how do we score here? Third and goal. Gotta be Julio Jones, right? Inside! Yikes. That was a good matchup. I know Denzel Ward in coverage. Good cornerback. But I like the matchup. And oh my god, I've done it again. Take notes. If you've never kicked a field goal before in a video game, take notes. What an unbelievable effort by me. I'm not playing defense right now. If we need a user pick, I'll hop in and make it happen. But we're going to simulate. We're up 10 nothing, And maybe even going to extend it to more. Minute 38 remaining here in the first half. From the 35. Third down and 10. We need a big conversion. Hooper! Drops it. Maybe should have went for a possession catch there. Big field goal. 52, guys. I swear to God, I can do this. Believe in me. If everyone believes in me, I'm going to smash it. Yes! There we go, baby. That's how it... Oh, are we going to score again? Hold on. Hold on just a minute. Oh, no, no, no. No timeouts. All right, snap the ball. 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 All right. 
All right. Weird. Uh, that's that's not really what I wanted to do. Hold on. Let's go change of quarter. We're going up 21-0. Browns finally answer with a touchdown. And we drive right back down to the one-yard line. And I'm sure we're going to get a moment. It's fourth down and goal. We could easily go a field goal, make it a, a three-score game. But you know what? I'm going to show off pure confidence. Shout out to Les Miles at LSU. I am kneeing the ball at the goal line. On fourth down. Yeah. Uh, definitely won't backfire. We already got the ball back. I'm running QB Neal for the rest of the game. Whine about it if you don't like it. This is how a team plays. This is how a confident team plays. We got a defense. Like how Matt Ryan celebrates. They're going for it on fourth down. Who cares? Onside kick. Who cares? They're going for it again. All right, we got to probably stop this. Probably got to stop this. All right, Demond Hall, is that his name? I have no idea. User pick, easy reads. Uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Personal favorite of mine. Why are we not in victory formation? I tried to hurdle. That's unfortunate. And they've called their final timeout. Hugh Jackson is pissed. And we're back to the QB Neal. I think the Atlanta Falcons are going to be Super Bowl champions. I think we're going to be Super Bowl champs. Why is it not ticking down faster? I don't have that on. All right. There is the final quarterback, Neil. Somebody wants a punt? All right, I'll show you a punt. This is called the Super Bowl championship punt, where uh, you think I'm going to take it, probably. And, um, yeah, let's keep it tight. We like it tight. I think I'm going to punt it into the end zone, but no. I'm a coffin corner still. <laughs> All right, maybe not. That's the game. The Atlanta Falcons are Super Bowl champions. I skipped the celebration because uh, I suck. And I guess that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This was a fun one. I like doing these on stream sometimes. And that will do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Take it easy.